Hi there, this is Mitch with Cold Timber Creations. I'm starting a new project which I'm very excited about. I'm going to be building a cutting board for a friend and a small business owner who's going to use the board in their display setup for craft fairs. I'm borrowing a lot of influence for the design of this board from Luke Martin at Owl Woodworks. I didn't want to do that without getting his permission so on a chance, I reached out to him on his Instagram channel and asked if he thought it might be okay if I did that. His response was more than generous. Of course, he agreed and he asked me to tag him in the final video or the final product so he could see how it turns out. Now, I don't think mine is going to turn out anywhere nice as his, but I'm going to do my best. Here you can see I'm cleaning up a couple of blanks that I'm going to be using for accent strips inside of the cutting board. My accent strips are going to be made of bloodwood and maple. I'm doing a little bit of edge cleanup right now on the table saw and then over to my miter saw before I begin joining these. The joint for these two pieces is going to be an end grain joint. I'm a little leery about doing it that way. I'm not quite sure how Luke does his. However, this is the way that I'm going to try and see if I can get it done because I want the edge grain to show through on the top of the board to pop for a little bit more color. So right here you can see how I'm going to join those together with just a little bit of glue and some clamping. I'm going to get ready to cut up the blank that I made into two inch thick pieces as I want the finished thickness of this cutting board to be right around an inch and seven eighths. You can see here the first thing I'm going to do is make a couple of reference lines so after I cut it, if my pieces get a little mixed up, I'll know how to get them back in the correct order. Placing the piece in my table saw sled, I can begin to make all of those cuts in rapid succession. Now we can go over and take a look at what all of the pieces are going to look like lined up next to each other. Handling this blank for the accent pieces really has me a little bit nervous. You can see here I'm going to get the edges as flat as I can. I don't have a jointer so I'm going to have to do it on my table saw. You can see I'm putting the bowed side out first so the ends ride flushly against my table saw fence. Once that happens I'll, short, I'll clean up this edge on my table saw, flip it over and do the other side. Once that's done I can bring this blank over to my band saw and begin cutting the eighth inch thick accent strips. As you can see, I'm going to use a feather board to hold the piece tight against my bandsaw fence. However, I'm still going to hold it pretty hard with my hand on the top as well, just to make sure the whole thing stays flush to my fence, because I want pretty uniform pieces 
for this cutting board. I wasn't sure how this was gonna go. I didn't know if my bandsaw blade was gonna wander on me or I didn't know if the integrity of that butt joint was gonna just fail. I'm not concerned about the butt joints once it gets inside of the cutting board because there'll be plenty of glue on all sides of these pieces. Just while up during the milling process, it has me a little nervous. All in all, the cutting process went very well and I was pretty pleased with the results. Here we can see in rapid succession all of the pieces that I cut. I was not real confident cutting this last piece. Something about a thin blank ripping on my bandsaw made me think that the blade was going to just wander on me or the piece was going to wander off of the fence. Turns out that it did. Uh, I did lose one of these pieces. It got a little too thin on me. The piece that remained a little extra thick, I will be able to clean that up on my drum sander when we get over there. Here as I finish this cut up, I will bring the pieces a little bit closer so you all can see how my piece did wander on me. You can see it got pretty thin there. I was very nervous putting these thin accent pieces through the drum sander with just a tiny little bit of glue holding them together at that butt joint. I didn't know if those butt joints were going to start failing on me or not, but I was committed at this point and I'm really interested to see how the edge grain is going to hold up color-wise compared to the end grain in the rest of the cutting board. As you can see from watching this next footage, that all of my end joints held up just fine. As I'm re-watching the footage of this glue up, I must admit that I am a little embarrassed that I was a little sloppy with my glue. I got a little too much on there. I know that it's better to have a little too much than not enough, but a little too much turned out to be a lot too much for me in this case. After I got all of the pieces in place, I began to square it up before I really tightened down on my clamps. As you can see here, I did forget for a second that I don't have four arms. I only have two, so I was going to have to stop in the middle of this process and go recruit some help. Now that I've got some little arms to magically appear, I was able to get these end pieces on to make sure that all of these pieces, that all of the cutting board pieces stayed in line with each other. Once I got it to a point where I could start tightening down my main clamps, I realized that one of the calls that I have in place was going to be in the way of me tightening a clamp. This is what happens when you don't adequately prepare for a glue up. A glue up is one of the most complicated parts of making cutting boards and I should have been more prepared than I was.
putting on a last little bit of pressure with some parallel jaw clamps. You can see that my gluing surface is quite a mess with drops of glue everywhere. Clamps laying around all over the place. Like I said, this was one of the sloppiest glue ups that I've done in recent history. I'm not very proud of it. But we'll see if my cutting board comes out square. As you can see here, I'm really paranoid about it because I'm trying to get a square in there, which of course I can't. We'll just have to stay tuned for the next video to see if I did get everything to come out square. Thanks again. This is Mitch from Cold Timber Creations, and we'll see you next time.